Is my father hitting my mother in the face as hard as he could? And she, she gets knocked out. And I remember seeing her on the floor and then looking at him, this giant of a man who I thought, my God, he says he loves her. What is he going to do to me? And all I could think, how I want to protect her. How I want to protect her. And how wrong it was. And I said, I got to be strong. And I got to get strength so that I can protect her. And every time he came home, we were scared. We didn't know. I literally wet the bed till I was 14 years old because I didn't know what was going to happen. I would wake up to glass breaking, uh, just sounds, people screaming, and it was a nightmare. We lived a nightmare for years. And I remember my mother coming into our room and saying, we're leaving. Pack our stuff. We're out of here. And we would grab everything we had and we put it in garbage bags. And we would tie it up and we would wait to go. And then she'd come back in and she'd say, we can't go. We can't leave. Where am I going to go? And I just remember feeling like, let's go anywhere. I don't care. We can be on the street. But she couldn't do it. And he went on terrorizing us, terrorizing us forever. And it was like, what could we do? And have to understand that people in this situation feel entirely hopeless, hopeless. We were hopeless. And I remember, see, and this was so wild because I picked up so many things. I thought, I'll never be like that. I'll never do that. But then I picked up a lot of other damaging things that come from that trauma. A lot of other things that had been assimilated into the culture, had been assimilated into athletic culture, assimilated into black culture, assimilated into my life. And I picked up a lot of these things, but this is the thing. What I was taught in, in my hood, in my area, is that be, simply because I was a man, I was more valuable than the women in my life. That, is a, that was a firm belief. And here I am, I'm like, you know, I watched my mother get abused. But here I am, as a man, I felt like, hey, it's my way or the highway. I remember times with my daughter Azriel, and I would yell at her as if she was a 30-year-old man. And I remember these times, and I, I, I remember, I constantly apologize, constantly call them and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Daddy didn't get it. Daddy missed it. And this, I couldn't believe what was happening, because here I was, a very successful man, very successful. But what you have to realize is that success is the warmest place to hide. You have to realize that people can't, they can't quantify the fact that, you know, this guy is just such a successful producer. How could he do these damaging things? This guy's a world-class athlete. How could he be this way? This guy's a professor and he's so intelligent. How could he do this stuff? This guy is a wonderful politician. How could this happen? Success is the warmest place to hide. I'm telling you, my wife, she's fearless. She's fearless. She looked me in my eye and she was gonna, she was ready to lose everything. She was like, I'm out. I don't care, I live by myself, I don't care, I don't need you, I don't need your money, I don't need anything. And that fearlessness woke me up. It woke me up to the damage I was doing. It woke me up, it was this catalyst that changed my life forever, that killed my pride. And I'm here to tell you, it's 
fixable. See, understand, this is fixable. This is something that you, we, we can be deprogrammed. You can see it, but you have to show people. We have to show people. Like my mother tried to get out. And I'm going to tell you something. She never got out. My mother died in 2015. She never escaped. I want to talk about this. Because when people understand that it does not matter what you look like, it doesn't matter. Anyone, anywhere can be victimized. And no man, woman, or child should ever put up with being treated as less than a human being, ever, ever. You know, and this is the deal. This is the deal. We have to speak up. We have to speak up.